Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. I'm trying to be funny. We've reviewed some bad films, but this is the first one credited to Alan Smithy. What's wrong with that? Alan Smithy is, or used to be, the name the Directors Guild allowed directors to use when they don't want their own name on a movie. <laughs> That's the whole idea. Pretty desperate measures, but what do you expect when you make a belated, ill-advised sequel to a masterpiece? The Birds. This is The Birds 2, Land's End. Does anyone think this will be good? I do. Now, let's not be silly. This should never have been made. And the only thing to ask is, does it at least work on its own terms? Oh, the hurt me. You can't judge it in isolation because it is a direct sequel. Did you know something like this happened before? But you've got to judge it on its own merits without forever berating it for its unnecessary and unwanted existence. A seagull ran into me. That's like blaming the child after the condom broke. And there should at least be some pluses. 30 years of special effects advances ought to make a difference. What are you saying, Jesse? We get ourselves to play with these fine feathered friends. Apparently not. God damn it! If you watch this space, you'll notice the birds enter a nexus of non-existence, fading in and out of reality. Well, stop it, you idiot! The plotting is similarly slapdash. Even though the events of Bodega Bay are within living memory, nobody believes in the bird attacks. Well, I've never heard of a bird attacking people in my life. The central family are attacked. <laughs> but refuse to cut short their holiday. Let's go for a swim before the girls wake up. It's not even consistent as a sequel. Bernard Herrmann's eerie avian soundtrack has been replaced by normal music, and Tippi Hedren is playing a completely different character. Oh, thanks. I guess a 30-year continuity error is forgivable. This one isn't. Have you ever seen a bird like that before? Five minutes later... You wouldn't happen to know what type of bird that is. Uh, yeah, it's the lesser spotted grows six inches after death. It's a black napturn. It's a starling. I know. Now, admittedly, the birds is tough to pull off. It's easy to forget this was a terrible idea for a film. What? How can you say that? It shouldn't work, and it's a testament to Hitchcock and writer Evan Hunter that it does. You got it. But Land's End had a head start. They knew what worked and still failed to learn the most important lesson of the original. So you don't understand. You've got a problem here. In Hitchcock's film, the bird's motivation is never explained. They just attack. It's pretty weird, isn't it? But here we get moral justification. You know, Mother Nature can take only so much before she hits back with all she's got. We get scientific explanations. Carl talked about the tides. It was a high tide when they hit us last night. This bird lays a trap. He really missed us. That's why he came home. The original was scary because you, out there in the audience, you can't know birds won't just attack. You can know they won't cut your phone line. It's dead. Followed by the power. Most irritatingly, there is a natural sequel to the birds. Right at the start of the film, birds are shown massing in the city, which we never see again. The brilliant final shot shows the characters leaving to an uncertain future. How do you know? Are you a bird? But rather than picking up on that thread, Land's End just retreads the events of the original film, minus the tension. They're going away. Then goes all Michael Bay. <laughs> Why was this made? Well, you know what? You're just wasting your film. If you've got a film you'd like us to review, leave a comment below. Click here to subscribe, here to watch more reviews, or if you'd like to watch the latest episode of Dark Corners Undead, click down there. There'll be more stories some other time.